Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Bachelorette live stream. Wow, isn't this exciting? I need to know if you guys can hear me. Someone leave a comment. I need to know if this is working. Uh, I feel like this is uh, command center when the, uh, you know, the moon, uh, when the, the, the astronauts landed on the moon. I've got uh, a bunch of uh, old white dudes smoking cigars in the background, slapping each other, all excited. Um, how's everyone doing? You guys doing all right? It says we got 16 people in the chat, but um, again, oh boy, I need to make this bigger. I've got this little alert box here. This is all new to me, folks. So let's make this bigger. Oh, there it is. You can hear me. Wow, those graphics look horrible. Just pulled that up here. Yes, we can hear you. Wow, well, isn't this exciting? <laughs> Do you know the amount of stress that goes into wondering if you guys are going to hear me? I didn't, I didn't want to do a test stream. I was like, we'll do it live. You know, I got all this gear that I've had, you know, from years of podcasting and photography. I'm an Instagram fiance. I have had to learn how to take photos of my fiance's bum so other men can like it online. I've had a lot of, a lot of work goes into that. And um, I got all this gear, but I never was able to live stream. I never had the appropriate um, tools to live stream. Uh, and so it, it cost me, where did I put the bucks? I had to buy this one cord. It was this big and it was $130, but it connects everything. And now the only question is if the, uh, the you know, the infrastructure of Los Angeles internet is going to hold up, but we will say hello from Orlando. Hello, Alicia. How's it going? Uh, I, I said a, uh, hello from Miami. Wow. We're big in Florida. Who knew? Uh, you guys wearing your masks over there in Florida or what? You you bunch of savages out there. You can hear me. De Deirdre. Deirdre's checking in from Georgia. Hello, Deirdre. The cam link is quite amazing. Isn't it nice? So I've got the, so the camera is obviously right here. I've got my Sony a6000. It's a beautiful camera. Isn't that nice? The problem is, is my laptop's over here. So for, in order for you guys to, uh, in order for me to read the chat, you got to see the big old beak that I have, but that's okay. We'll be okay. I've updated my uh, setup this year. We got this new, oh, you know what? I didn't turn this on. This, <laughs> I should just sell Amazon products. This is my favorite quarantine purchase. $15. It's, um, it's L, uh, LED tape that you tape onto, you know, a dresser or behind your TV. You can do it. So watch this. So you just kind of hit that. And look, I got all these different colors. I'm going to, uh, hold on a second. I was trying to sit on this stool. It wasn't working out. <sighs> So if anyone has any requests for background colors, let me know what works. Is that too, uh, that look, that looks too seductive, right? Maybe we'll just keep it something chill. I don't know. I tried doing this the other night with Tasha, but she didn't like that. I tried to put the mood light on for, her. so, uh, it's the, you know, it's the one, the one uh, thing we got in this tiny apartment is exposed brick. I always thought it was fun. Exposed is a funny word, right? The, the only time you can talk about something being exposed and being okay with it is brick. Right? If it's like, if someone was like, oh, Luke P exposed himself, you'd be like, oh, geez, there we go. Bachelor's going to sue him for exposure. But if it's like, oh, Luke P's new apartment has exposed brick, you'd be like, oh, he's doing okay. He's doing, hello from Nashville. What's up, Nashville? Oh, you like blue? Catherine likes blue. We're going to go, well, this is kind of a blue, right? You don't want like dark blue, do you? We'll see if we get talking, t you know, talking about some depressive things, we'll go dark blue. Oh, that's a nice color blue. We like that. That'll be all right. I got my little boutonniere here. I bought, uh, I bought a dozen roses on Monday or Tuesday and uh, Tasha got all excited and then she realized it was bachelorette day and she was like, you just using those as props for your show. Well, that's true. You can never win. You can never win with the ladies. So we got a whole bunch of things we're going to get into. I've got a few voicemails that people have already left. If you want to leave me a voicemail, there's a number you can call right there. The call number 401-213-9828. You can leave a voicemail. Ask me any questions. Honestly, anything. I'm a comic. There's nothing I haven't talked about. Obviously, we've been getting real all year long. Catherine, you like that? Thank you for the thumbs up. Um, so yeah, leave a, you leave a voicemail. If you want to talk live, call me right now. We'll talk live. We'll get right into it. If you want to ask your questions live, what I'm going to do is I, again, I don't, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but I've got this set up over here. Let's play the first one. We'll play the first voicemail that I got. Um, this is from Canada. Let's, let's play this one and see what we got. I'm clearly, I'm not playing it right. Oh, there it is. I hit the wrong button. Wow, Dave. All right, here we go. This is a voicemail from Canada. Dave, here's Montreal uh, 
Wishing you good luck with your podcast, man. Break a leg. We're following you from Montreal. Take care, bro. Oh, that was uh oh that was uh, Etienne. My buddy Etienne uh, was the first voicemail that anyone left. Uh, but th- this this chat thing's not going to work on this background. Maybe I can find a different background to do the chat. Um, someone said they were watching during their lunch break. Uh, Etienne, thank you so much for leaving a voicemail coming in from Quebec. I love the Quebec accent. Uh, Etienne and I studied abroad in France together. Uh, what f- what well, was about fifteen years ago now, which makes me feel ancient. Uh, Etienne is, oh my gosh, we studied abroad in France when they were having a bus strike. So this is before Uber. I feel so old. This is before Uber. This is uh, before, you know, taxis cost like 50 bucks a pop, you know, broke college student. And there was a bus strike. So they have what's called fair d'auto stop, fair d'auto stop. I don't know if my French people, if I'm pronouncing that right, but it just means hitchhiking. So I was there when this is when George Bush uh, w. This is when W was president. This is how long ago it was. And um, there was a bus strike for 60 days. So I couldn't, it took me hours to hitchhike to class every day. Etienne lived on campus. So I ended up staying with him in like a 100 square foot apartment. We got myself a blow up mattress that slid under his uh, uh, twin bed. Oh man. You know, you know what I mean? Like I could, I could literally hit the lottery today and be worth $700 billion. And I would, I would spend half of that just to go back to Marseille, France and relive those memories. Weird how that works. Got nostalgic. So anyway, let's check. So I wanted to check in on a few things. Um, I had a, let's, let's, uh, let's see what we got here. I had uh, uh, this, <laughs> a few different clips of, of things I wanted to play. Um, do, do, hold on. What's that noise? Can you guys hear that? Oh, I shut that off. I think that was only in my ears. Sorry about that. So um, I got Dale over here. Boy, where did... It, hold on one second, folks. I found I found this uh, video of Dale uh, doing the combine. Can you guys see this? So this is actually his pro day. This is before... The, oh, I lost it. Mother. Try not to swear. Don't swear, Dave. They'll demonetize you. So this is Dale before... Um, he got drafted. Actually, he, he ended up not getting drafted. But I, it's always interesting to me when people are talking about how, oh, you know, like he was, you know, oh, Colton Underwood was just a uh, practice squad player. Anyone who's ever like tried to make it in professional sports knows how hard it is, how amazing the competition is. And Dale, he was actually considered one of the best. I mean, look, they call this the three cone time, right? Where you go back and forth. Um, is anyone is anyone familiar with the combine? I mean, it is ridiculous. They do this. This is a 225 pound bench press. They see how many times you can do this. So it's like you know everyone's getting tested on the same things. They see how high you can do your vertical and how fast your 40 is. And while these stats don't always matter, um, someone said they're curious to know if they were talking before the show. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into Dale and uh, Claire and if they were talking before the show. That seems to be the big question. But anyway, so so they do these these different uh, what's it, so they do these different um, skills just so the pro uh, the pro scouts can see if they're any good. He played for like several seasons. I mean, the guy, you know, like you sign a four hundred thousand dollar contract. That's the league minimum. There's that's no joke. You know what I mean? It's no joke. So I will never be the one to make fun of an athlete who made it as far as the practice squad who who got signed to an NFL contract. You know what I mean? I'll never make fun of that. Um, it is ridiculous. And so anyway, so we'll get into all that. We'll get into uh, if people think it's, um, you know, a lot of people have wondered if Dale is just uh, looking for fame because here's the deal. All right. This is the gig economy that we live in, right? We live in a world where you, like a, in a lot of cases, you don't make your money unless you make it on your own. Like me, like Nick Vile, like any of these people, like they get stripped down to their core. They get, oh, we don't need to watch this. They get a bunch of Dale videos. Um, they get, you know, they, they basically wreck their, they wreck their persona because they get put on some show where they, you know, hook up in a yurt in the middle of the Palm Springs desert or whatever, you know, um, why is that frozen? And uh, it's, you know, you, you have to, you have to realize that like people are just trying to make a buck. They're trying to survive. They're trying to put food on the table for their family. So like, can we separate Dale wanting to uh, maximize his ability to be a model and influencer and also crazy to think want to fall in love? 
They, you think they try to cover it up by uh, so bluntly that the other um, they, oh, they, they try to cover it up by saying the other guy was the only one who wanted to reach out to her. Um, I think they did that to hide that her and Dale have been talking. I got to, first of all, I got to fix this, um, the way we're doing, here's what I'm going to do. I got to fix the way that we're doing this uh, chat because it's not set up right. So let me make me smaller. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shrink myself down right there. And then we're going to find the chat box and make that bigger. Where's the chat box? Am I out of breath? Is it possible to get out of breath from live streaming? Um, I think this is the chat box. So let's see. Let's see if that goes into a better spot. Anyways, um, looks like we got some voicemails coming in. So, oh, I got a voicemail from Sammy in Florida. A lot of people in Florida. What's going on over there? I didn't know we had a big following in Florida. I say we, it's just me. Tasha's going to get in in a little bit, so we might actually get Tasha on the stream. But um, should we get right into it? How many people do we have in the stream? I wanted to make sure we had a decent amount of people in the stream before we got going. Uh, we got a, There's a couple of you guys in there. Let's see. It says there's 37. All right, we got 37 people. Let's talk. So uh, today's topics, uh, Bachelorette premiere, Colton Underwood, Luke P. gets sued, JP and Ashley divorce, news, reading, comments, and then I'm going to end with the analytic report. All right, that's where I tell you exactly how much my channel's been making. Yeah, it was a crazy month. Uh, I don't make videos for the analytics. To be quite honest, the main reason I invest my time into YouTube is the quote that I try to live by, don't rent out your time. So uh, as a stand-up comedian, you basically, for for the history of, of the world with stand-up comedy, you're at the whim of a booker, of a producer of a show. You, you, know, you have to kind of like get in with a comedy club, kiss ass, this and that. But with YouTube, you're able, um, you're, with YouTube, you're able to sort of make your own following and... I would be happy right now if, if I, if I could perform anywhere in the country for 50 people, I really would. That would be, that would be better than being like a name guy that's, you know, attached to some comedy club. So anyway, the point is, is that with YouTube, you know, for me, it's always about just, um, expressing my voice. And then when I found out that you could actually make a few bucks on it with ad revenue, I was like, great, that's awesome. That would be great. So when I made a video this month about Colton and Cassie and it took off, it made a lot of money. It doesn't change the fact that it's great content to be talking about. It's great to be talking about domestic violence and the amount of people. I mean, we're talking 3 million impressions or 3 million uh, minutes watch time. So like 10 million impressions. The amount of people that commented, I think I responded to almost everyone, except for there was a couple crazy people. But it's amazing how how much people want to um, unburden and talk about uh, topics that I guess no one's talking about. I mean, Chris Harrison didn't really address it, right? I don't see any of the major people really breaking it down, but what we have with Colton is just a real issue that's not rare. It's not a rare issue. Everybody knows somebody who is a victim of domestic violence. Everybody knows somebody, whether it's your mom, your sister, uh, you. Uh, we, we, it, it is one degree of separation max, and for and and we just don't think that either. I I don't know. I don't know what it is. But like I, I can I have to be careful talking about it because even YouTube demonetized half the content because even YouTube's like, wow, this isn't, you know, advertiser friendly. Well, if this isn't advertiser friendly, I don't know what we're doing on here because sometimes, you know, topics just need to be said. Anyway, so hello from North Carolina. How are you? I wish these comments would stay up longer. I'm going to try to figure that out, guys. Um, if I missed your comment, you know what I might have to do is just go on to the YouTube on my phone and see what I missed. But anyway, we're going to get into all that. I'm going to share the analytics report. I'll put it right on the screen. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about after. And um, yeah, yeah, Papa got paid. I mean, look, I uh, unemployment ran out. And the week that I turned in all of my clothes for my side gig, I turned it all into Goodwill. Because I was like, I don't want to wear clothes of a company that ditched me. And it was only my survival company anyway. I didn't even want to work there. So I turned it in. I, I go with the mantra, leap in the net will appear. Don't rent out your time. And I said, let's spend this quarantine investing in, you know, live streams and doing things on YouTube. Anyway, you guys aren't, you guys aren't here for that. But the point is, is that the week that my, that I turned in my, uh, my, my old uniforms for my side gigs, my, uh, proverbial, uh, McDonald's hat or whatever the job was, it was the uh, week that the video took off and started paying my bills again. So I appreciate that. Someone wants to know about JP and Ashley. We're going to talk about that too. So, um, what do we want? So first things first, 
Uh, thank you so much, Sabrina. I appreciate that. I mean, I've made videos for a long time. And, um, you know, YouTube will tell you, you know, hey, talk more about Colton Underwood. And then that's what you do. You make 10 more videos. Um, I didn't I didn't think I was going to break it down so far. But every single time I talked about one aspect of the Colton Underwood issue, it led to something else to talk about. We talked about toxic love. And again, guys, I know about it because I read about it. You, might, I mean, look, I got codependency no more. <laughs> Can you guys see this right here? Hold on. Let me open. Widen, widen this up. I got codependency no more. I got all these books. You are a badass. Uh, uh, why good people do bad things. Men are from Mars. The Book of Secrets. Uh, uh, some of these are Tasha's. Um, a couple. Uh, the Law of Divine Compensation. In, inside that, I got Manifest Your Destiny. I got books inside of books. So I'm not an expert on anything, but I am thirsty for the knowledge that will take the weight and anxiety and guilt in anger, in sadness off of my shoulders so I can live the most authentic version of myself. Um, if you use vertical mode on your phone, you can see all the chat. Oh, thank you so much. You guys are great. I didn't have this turned on because I didn't want to, um, uh, I didn't want to bug anybody with, uh, so I got 50, okay, let's, let's take a look. It says I only have one comment. Oh, maybe that's because that's the, um, sorry, oh, I don't know, guys. I'll figure it out. Anyway, play some of this little music in the background. So, love your channel. How long have you been doing Bachelor Recaps? Uh, thank you. Is it Rachel? Thank you, Rachel. Um, I ship JP and Becca K. What does that mean? I ship. Um, does that, wait, sorry. Did you say some, another girl here in Florida? Florida's killing it. Jeez. I know it's a big state. I'm over here in California. California and Florida look alike on paper, but they couldn't be more different, right? You guys got that humid air. We got cold, cold water freezing out here. Hey, from Rhode Island, Courtney Sims. Where in Rhode Island are you from? I'm looking at my live chat now, Linda. I couldn't find it on my phone. It wasn't buffered or something. So I'm looking at it straight on my stream right now. Um, I am from Rhode Island. Are, are we friends? Make sure you're in desktop mode um, if you're on your phone. You know what I'm going to do is I'll just set it up. Appreciate your thirst for knowledge. It ends up helping us all. Yeah, Jen. Absolutely. Oh, good to see you, Jen. Jen, you're, you're in Canada, right? Oh, Alicia Garcia. How are you? Ship is approval. Sabrina, how old are you? Am I too old to know what ship is? You got these words, right? Ship and stand. Like, what are you guys even saying? I've refused. Warwick now, but I went to URI with you. Oh, hey. URI. I had a little URI plaque somewhere. Boy, this is what a business degree gets you. Sorry, I, I'm just seeing the name, so it's hard to know who I'm actually talking to. But um, I, I really appreciate you guys uh, so much for being here. Sorority life. You want to talk about that? There are some photos. Don't you love... What year, what year did you graduate? Did you graduate 07? Um, isn't it amazing how fortunate we were to not have Snapchat when we went to college? We got to just live life. I'm not saying that there was like crazy incriminating things going on, but we got to have social parties, live our lives, not worry about like the day to day or having to look good for Instagram. I mean, I can't tell you how grateful I am. Facebook literally came out my sophomore year of college and you don't, you know, it's so long ago, right? It's, isn't it insane? Anyway, I feel so old thinking about it, but, um, but yeah, that's the truth is that, is that, uh, um, you know, I, I, we were the first generation to, we were the first generation to experience social media, but learn how to make a phone call before, you know, we could just text somebody. So we had to learn how to like call somebody and not know if their dad was going to pick up. Um, it's so good with our Snapchat. Yeah. I mean, it is, you know, it, it was nice. I, I kind of feel for hello from New Orleans, New Orleans, you eating a crawdaddy over there in New Orleans. Um, you meant to say JP just got divorced. Ship means connect JP and Becca. Oh, so you want Becca K and JP to connect. How incestuous is bachelor nation that this is what we want. What up Philly? How's the water over there in Philly? That's a horrible uh, impression. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Uh, you gotta, you gotta, uh, mind my multitasking right now. I'm trying to pull up the, uh, live chat. You know, for some reason it just ain't happening on my end. Let's see if I can move forward. I'm in desktop mode. 
Anyways, I can see you guys uh, live. So thank you so much. My goal for today was to get to 6,000 subscribers. Um, like 10 days ago, I was at 2,500 subscribers. Uh, it's just, like I said, I'm going to stop being so annoying and grateful about it all, but it's just insane how much support I've received from the bachelor community that I am so, so thankful to all of you. The updated numbers, I have um, 5,945. So I'll probably hit 6,000 today, uh, which will be great. I can't tell you how great it's been to talk to my fiance and her get to see that a lot of the YouTube things that I've been doing have been paying off. And anyway, um, Okay, wait, JP as in JP and Ashley got divorced. Yes, let's talk about it. So someone had actually written in uh, a little earlier and this is what they wanted to know from one of the Facebook groups. So I wanted to let them know that I saw their comment. Thoughts on Dale, thoughts on recent news of JP Ashley split, thoughts on the whole Colton drama with Cassie. All right, so you, let's let's do JP. Let's start right in. Brooklyn, New York and yo, Brooklyn in the house. Love me some Brooklyn, New York. Are you Brooklyn, New York, like from Brooklyn? Or are you like some hipster, you know, that like writes on a typewriter out of, you know, a Starbucks? Yeah, that's right, Jen Murphy. Getting it in there. Getting it in there. So let's see how I can get to, hold on, let's switch it over here. Uh, here's some comments. How funny is this? Uh, let me pull this one up. Which one is it? The uh, Colton Underwood. I, I randomly stumbled upon this tweet of his. It's a little funny looking at people's tweets after they've kind of fallen off the deep end. Pretty cool words from church this morning. Just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. That didn't age well, Colton. We've identified you by your actions due to the penal code in California. You cannot track your ex-girlfriend. We've identified you by a serial number on a tracking device. You can't do that. That is not something you can do. Um, let me see if I can pull up. Okay. So here we go. Let's talk about this. Let's, I'm sorry for jumping around. We're going to talk about the, the Ashley, uh, JP thing. Uh, here we go. So let's go into it. Bachelorette couple, Ashley Hebert and JP Rosenbaum split, uh, bachelorette, but you know, this, this shows us how old we're getting. Rosenbaum, JP was 43. They made the, he made the announcement on Instagram. How sad was this guy's? Why do we put so much, like, what's the psychology behind how much weight we put into other people's lives? Is it that we get to know their names so we immediately get invested? Like, what is it? Please, please, please know that there is no one to blame, that there's no event that triggered this decision, that no one is the victim, and that we've done absolutely everything we can possibly we possibly can to try to salvage this marriage, Rosenbaum's post continued. I think we've both come to realize that we're just two very different people with very different personalities and perspectives who just don't see eye to eye on a lot of life fundamentals. Those which are the building blocks to a happy, for a happy and healthy marriage. And look at this. They, she posted this. How devastating is this? I'm, I don't know, guys. This, this, uh, cause I'm with you. It would be foolish to be like, oh, people are crazy when they get invested in random people's lives. But I'm with you guys. I mean, I, you know, like I was there. I was there with, I was there for that season and, I was, I mean, probably, you know, happy teary eyed when they, you know, uh, you know, I don't know when they, when they kind of got hitched and whatever. And look, people just grow apart. You know, the, the podcast, I have the sap. One of our logos is a tree. Let me see if I, ha uh, it's a tree with two people intertwined. And the idea is, is that you grow up together. Uh, if, if codependency happens when one person becomes like the root of the relationship and the other person has to grow like vines around them and you lose your identity or two people just grow apart. That would be counter dependency. And that's not good either. You need to grow next to each other, share the sunlight, share the resources. And frankly, that just doesn't always happen with people. It doesn't always happen that, um, Kathy said, I think for whatever reason we can relate to these people, but usually we are there for the whole season and really that thought they might make it. Yeah. Yeah, you you know, and they, I mean, they did have kids. Isn't it wild? Is it wild how like couples like Evan, uh, who's Evan's, what's his, uh, what's her name? That, you know, they, they, I'd never thought in a million years they would last, but you know, p th these are humans outside of an edited reality that, that Bachelor creates. Ashley, Ashley season was my first watching, so I've always had a soft spot for them both. I was really sad to hear this. Yeah, Kyla, I hear you. Absolutely. It's, um, there, there isn't much to say other than, 
Um, they're just like us. You know that like uh, Us Weekly, like celebrities are just like us too. They buy avocados. You know what I mean? Uh, they curse at, you know, random people in traffic. Um, uh, it's, it's, it is what it is. Um, let's see what, let's see. Oh, we actually, uh, uh, now works. I'm going to, I think we got a phone call coming in. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see what's going on here. Um, hold on one second, folks. Yeah, the, the, oh, Carly, Carly, that's her name. Thank you so much. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's JP just went through a really bad health scare that crisis can put huge strain on the relationship. Very sad when any family gets split. Yeah. When someone said, did you hear the JP news? I thought he died. I thought that that's what they were talking about. Cause it just, you know, it's kind of like when you, when someone says that, like something, you know, it's funny that I thought he died before I thought their relationship was going to end. What is that? that? I mean, but the, the image that people put out there, like my, like with my fiance and myself, we're, we're, we're in a good, we're in a healthy place, but we've been on the rocks before. And you know, you still post a photo with each other and you look great. And it's like, sometimes it's, it's not what you think it is. And the one thing that I credit my six years of my relationship so far is we aren't, Oh, here we go. Going to call here. Hold on folks. All right, one second. Can you hear me? Hello. Caitlin, can you hear me? Yeah. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Great. Welcome to my live stream, my uh, inaugural live stream. You're my first call. Oh, my Oh my gosh. I feel so special. Thanks for having me. I want to give you a good introduction. We're talking with Caitlin, one of our favorite Canadian comedians. And I'll promote some of your stuff after our chat, but it's, I haven't seen you since quarantine started. Are you surviving? How are you? Oh my God. It's an emotional roller coaster. You know, one day I'm doing great. And the next day I'm starting a bottle of tequila. So it's, it's really, uh, it's a mix of both. You sound like everyone in bachelor nation, just a bottle of tequila and like rooting other people's lives on. Right, except in Bachelor Nation, it's like champagne, right? Like, everybody's always drinking champagne, I feel like. Or it, it's exploding in their face. They're always... They exactly! Get... Yep, that was the reference I was trying to make. I'm glad you picked that I'm up. I'm on it. Are you, like, do you think you would be that dramatic if you were on the show? Do you think you would fall into that trope? I mean, I feel like I would be bad on the show because I feel like I would be just standing around kind of laughing about what's going on. Um... And sort of just like, is this real life? And like, I would be a mess. I would be the one drinking all the free booze all the time and getting <laughs> wasted and like jumping into the pool naked. Like that would probably be me. I would last a couple episodes for entertainment value, but certainly everyone would know I would be kicked off very soon. I think Canadians make the best contestants on the show because you, you all have a better relationship with sexuality. Have you noticed that with really? American? Oh yeah, I've always well, said I mean, this. Caitlin Bristow, she's like you know exactly the, the famous Canadian um, bachelorette, and of course she had sex with Nick Vile, and that was the whole thing. So, yeah, I know they were like, you're supposed to um, wait till uh, the fantasy suite, and she was like, sorry, um, I banged him. Jen, <laughs> Jen, <laughs> sorry, Jen Murphy wants to know where you're from. I know. I actually thought she was from Ontario. I was from uh, Toronto. I uh, did. I lived there for like eight years. Actually, to be more precise than she knows, Pembroke, Ontario. Shout out to Pembroke. Shout We're out for our retirement homes and our murals. <laughs> very exciting town. Canada is hijacking my chat. I got a lot of people in Florida and Canada, so we've got both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> well, yeah, because in Canada we have like the best or best at Canada, but I don't know if you ever watched it. It's so lame. Like, the dates they go on, they're like, we're going to go to, like, Dildo Newfoundland, like, where nothing happens. And, like, they have not even a fraction of the amount of money that they have in American Bachelor. So everybody just gets the Canadian Bachelor Bachelor and watches the American one. Way well, more entertaining. Is, is it, do they get more fantasy suites in the Canadian Bachelor? Are they all going on, like, a, you know, are they playing hockey together? Like, what's the uh, stereotype? <laughs> Probably, yeah. And also, they have way less funding for the Canadian series, so they, they date for like three weeks. <laughs> and then they like, <laughs> get married. <laughs> that, first of all, if you, if you don't write a screenplay about this, they don't have the budget. So it's like, look, this is more of a 90 minute lifetime movie. So if you could get on, drink some champagne, have a Labatt Blue, and go for it. Yeah, for real. It's like you got to fall in love real quick. 
on what? the Canadian Bachelor Bachelor. <laughs> that's why, like, none of them have ever lasted because it's like this is not enough time. Well, you know what I love? I loved you in um, now. Tell me the name in in the Trailer Park Boys. What was the name of like this se- like the season or whatever when you you and Laura were in it? Because you guys played like trailer trash, uh, horrors, right? Yes, <laughs> that's right. Yes, we were in season ten of Trailer Park Boys on Netflix, and we played uh, Julian's girlfriend. He had two girlfriends for the first two episodes, and our names were Bambi and Dakota. And it's funny because my aunt afterwards, who my aunt is like kind of proper and she was always like, Oh, Caitlin, like tell me tell me what episodes they are. I was like, Well, um, because basically all of our lines were like, Are we gonna bang now? Are we gonna bang later? Oh, I just wanna bang you. Like that was basically what our character's main drive was, was bang now or bang later. Well, a very classy uh, intro to Netflix, but I mean you guys really hit it out of the park. If anyone's listening oh, or watching yeah. and has, hasn't seen it, go on Netflix and check check you guys out. I mean, uh, it, that's I mean the Canadians, you, the Canadians kill it with comedy. I've been I've been watching Shit's Creek. Have you seen that show? Of course, and it just won literally every Emmy category for like comedy comedy acting, which is Lit- so cool. Literally, and it's great for Canada, every. Emmy. We watched the whole show, you know, the final episode, and then we went on YouTube and watched all the Emmy acceptance speeches. And I don't know, I'm, I'm sure normal people can appreciate when someone wins, but you and I, as comics, we see, like, the result of decades of work. And I, I pause on, like, Chris Elliott with, he's got food on his lip, and I go, that's not an accident. He, like, chose that, you know, that uh, <laughs> instrument to be funny. Like, he... So many funny characters that are like, we just take it for, with a grain of salt that it's like, oh, they you know, they put something funny together. It's like, no, they all brought craziness to the table. You know what I mean? Oh, totally. And, and I just feel like, you know, especially with the Emmys, Canadians don't get recognized. So that was like so cool. And I think all of the cast of Shit's Creek is really shocked because this has like never happened where a Canadian show has like crossed the border and become as popular as it did. And, Especially comedy in general. I don't think comedy always gets, you know, the the spotlight that it that it deserves. Like I think a lot of people don't take comedy as seriously as they do dramatic acting, but it's equally as important. And I would I would argue even more difficult to do comedy. Oh yeah, I mean because you know you can you can you can look dramatic and have. And by the way, we just totally hijacked this with our you know thespian thoughts. But yeah, right, you can, right. I, I do want to talk about that stuff. No, but I totally I, I totally. I totally agree. I totally agree that you have to like, it, it is, it's a lot of awareness when it comes to comedy, what you're doing. And Canadians are very, I think the, the humor can be very dry, but fast. And I appreciate, like, I, like I want to watch Shit's Creek again because I'm like, I, I know I caught it all, but I want to watch these characters like develop more because they're so good. Oz, Oz is over I there know, in Vancouver. Oz, we have another, uh, a Vancouver Canadian who loves Shit's Creek. So, um, yeah, I like to just do a live stream oh and God, promote. Speaking uh, of Vancouver and trying to segue here, Caitlin Bristow, who I've been like really rooting for her on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. I feel like I know her and I'm like, she's killing it. She's so down, like beyond down to earth with what she wants where like who yeah. she is as uh, like a raw it's so crazy to think that we got from her uh you know being kind of slut shamed right to it kind of going to hannah brown season where we're we're like so pro you know it, it's it's taken a swing in the right direction from caitlin's season and that's part that's partly because she wouldn't accept what they wanted her to be you know right and I love, actually, Hannah Brown was maybe my favorite season of The Bachelorette. And part of it was because, like any good story, you want to see a character grow and change. And I feel like a lot of Bachelorettes go into it, like, as really already super strong women. And so they don't necessarily, you don't see them grow and change as much. Like, especially Rachel Lindsay, like, she was, you know, this really strong, powerful woman. She's like, I know what I want. But Hannah Brown, I remember in the beginning, she was so thirsty. And she was so self-conscious and you could just tell like she was not secure in herself. And I remember being like really annoyed with her in the beginning of the season. I was like, oh my God, this is going to suck. Like she was already in love with this Pete, the worst person ever, like right away. She was just like, but then by the end of the season, she found herself and she was such a badass. And when she dumped Luke P, I feel like every woman 
who has been in a bad relationship that went on way too long felt so proud of her just in that moment, having that aha moment and being like, wow, I am done with you. Like, get away from me. You just made my life easier. Get out of my life. And every girl was just watching like, yes. <laughs> You're so right. Because I, I became a young woman in that moment. I was like, I was like, baby, you don't take shit from no one. <laughs> I became sassy. Um, <laughs> I but, know, when she picked up that, like, podium and moved it, like, everybody lost their mind. Now, I've been defending Luke P. this week because, I don't know if you've been following this, the news, he was sued by The Bachelor for $100,000. Did you hear this one? I did not know this. So he was sued no. for 100000 and the judge ruled in favor of The Bachelor producers, and, and Luke P. also has to pay the $20,000 in court in legal fees. So... Luke P owes 120,000. So look, I agree with the fact that Hannah should not take anything from Luke, but he, he argues, uh, once the show aired, you know, he was kind of like canceled and this and that, uh, shout out to Jennifer yeah. uh, for just subscribing. I just noticed that. Thank you so much. Um, Luke P says that they kind of manipulated the conversation. Now, look, you can't manipulate, like he was for sure controlling, but apparently Hannah Brown had already told him that she wanted to wait till marriage to have sex. So he did have like this sort of like confusion, you know, those, his little eyes kind of, his little eyebrows perk up. He had this little puppy dog confusion that she wasn't who he wanted her to be. So I, I defend him in the, in the sense that you, if you don't want your girlfriend to go have sex with other guys in a yurt on fantasy suites, then you can't, you shouldn't be on the show. But when he was like, may I pray for you? And this and that, it's like, he was, he was putting it on too much. Like you have to let somebody tell you who they are. You know what I mean? You have to let somebody's actions tell you who they are. And if you, if it doesn't line up, it doesn't line up. But do I think it's right that the bachelor chewed him apart and then gave him a bill of $120,000? I mean, that's a bad look. You know, like you already. Why did they sue him? Why did they? What was the hundred thousand dollars? So for? the contract, um, the contract states that you can't go on any unapproved like media podcast or anything for the first year after your show airs. But what I think happened was, so he went on four different podcasts or news, you know, Christian podcast, whatever it was, uh, reality, Ugh. Steve, and. Uh, and, but I mean, it's like, look, the guy probably wanted to defend himself. He was, you know, like he, he clearly was compelled to break his contract because he felt like they were manipulating the storyline. So I think the truth lies somewhere between what we saw and what he's saying. But I, I would love nothing more than if Bachelor would just air the whole conversations so we could see it. Because I think if we became judges for ourselves, we would still side with Hannah Brown, but it would be better to not have some like big brother production company tell us what happened when it involves this like you know this thing so anyway that's a whole nother that's a whole nother issue but um i kind of hope that he right. fight i hope he fights it a little bit because i think i think with today's with youtube and with all the access that we have to media it would be really nice for us to see longer versions of these conversations that they cut up because we know that they're guilty of kind of like highlighting it and clickbaiting it just like come on we're we're all adults here put it on your I youtube guess, but Luke was, I have to say, I hated Luke. He was so <laughs> terrible. He gaslighted the shit out of Hannah Brown so much. He was so manipulative to her. And it made me so angry. Because like I said, every woman knows some sort of guy that has done that to, the, to him. So, But I will say that does suck that has to wait a year to defend himself in any way. Right. There should be but, a, this is why I say there should be something called like bachelor court where after your season, if you were made uh -huh. to be the villain, you get to take bachelor to a court, put it on TV, make a bachelor court. And, um, uh, Jen says Luke P rants uncut would be something I'd love to see. Like, I'd love to see Chad Johnson, Chad's uncut, you know, uh, rants or whatever. But I agree with you that it, what they showed made it clear that he had never really been challenged by other opinions and whatnot. So, but again, is it worth a hundred thousand yeah. dollars when they're not making any money in the first place? You know, it's like, it's, I mean, it, yeah, the, the suing him is, I mean, yeah. I, like, have you ever seen the show? Yeah, I'm sure you have the show unreal. Like I watched a few episodes of that. I was like, Oh my God. Like, you don't realize the manipulation by the producers that goes on right. behind the scenes. Like we have no idea, but they do everything that they can to push these people's buttons to make good TV. Right. And you know, like, you know, you, as, as a producer, actor, director, you've done it all. You know, sometimes if it's an over the shoulder shot and you can't see somebody's lips, that it's, 
it's a it's a dialogue that came from a different scene you know like it just happens it's it's something we know that happens so i'm always hesitant to believe something if i don't see it uncut coming out of somebody's mouth because if they if they did have it uncut coming out of someone's mouth they would have showed that the, the, the fact that they cut to an over the shoulder means that they're doing an editing trick i don't know well yeah i mean the whiskey does suck big time <laughs> But uh, paying hundred he deserves to pay a hundred thousand dollars to a company that is already worth multi millions of dollars. I don't know if that's really necessary. They already, like you said, tarnished his name. He like everybody hates him. Like I feel like that was enough. Yeah. The guy like we hate him. Although I really hate if I watched your season again, I would probably get really fired up and hate him all over again and be like, yeah, good, he deserves it. But what for it- now, it's been enough time that I can sit back and be like, ah, that kind of sucks. Yeah. And they're, here's a the deal. They're all so young. You know, what was she, 22 at the time? It's like, it's like they're so insanely young. I was an idiot in my 20s. Not not on his level, right. but like, I was like, if I got, I remember I got ghosted on once and I was like, sh- b- barely short of a panic attack because someone didn't get back to me. You know, like our whole identity is just you crushed. You got ghosted on once? You're lucky, man. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, you know, like, 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 you know, the industry has been ghosting on me since, you know, the Reagan administration, but call me back. <laughs> Oh man! Um, I wanted to ask you oh, yeah. uh, before we get out of here. Uh, how's your like love life going? What's up with you? What's your update? Oh my god! Speaking of ghosting, um, I years and years ago came on your podcast, um, The Sap, and we talked about this guy that I had been on a few dates with, had like the best sex of my life. We had this incredible connection. And then he like ghosted me. And I think you actually called the episode ghosted. (laughs) And he is now my husband. We've been married for a year and a half. We're extremely happy. He's the love of my life. Wow. Somehow it worked out. So for all the ladies out there, Sometimes it does happen. Sometimes the guy who's a total idiot does get his shit together and becomes the best guy ever. That's amazing. You know, I, I, I've always said this. I think women give each other such horrible advice because I think in a lot of cases, <laughs> you know, women are like, you know, you don't need that man. Get it. You know, you don't know what he was going through. Maybe, you, you know, like you just never know what someone's going through. And sometimes good things fall through the cracks. But if it, if it circles back like your situation, how amazing is that? That like no egos were like busted and you were able to put them in line and you guys, that's congratulations. That's, I knew you guys, I mean. Thank you. I, I, I forgot that. Yeah, he got my final rose. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I, what a great, first of all, this is a great phone call because this is so appropriate to what we're talking about. We need to catch up in person. Uh, are you, you're still in Hollywood, right? I am still in Hollywood, yes. Living the life in Glendale. Whoop, whoop. There it is. Well, let's hang out when um when COVID lets us and uh and all that jazz. But oh, yeah, um, so that'll be two years. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, we should be famous by then. Um, but um, I appreciate your phone call. And where can people, if people want to support your comedy or whatever, how can people find you? I want to let you get promoted. Ah, oh, you're sweet. Uh, it's Caitlin Mamie across the board. Uh, K a i t l i n m is in Mary a m is in Mary i e. Um, yeah, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, get silly, silly stuff all over the place for people to to entertain themselves with if they so desire. And they can watch you on Netflix season 10 of Trailer Park Boys too, which is highly right. funny. I'm so <laughs> blessed with this Canadian royalty I've been talking to just now. Um, thank oh my you- <laughs> gosh. Thank you so much. Thank for- you so much for having me. Thanks for. congrats on. 6,000? Is that 6,000 I today? think I think I'll get there by the end of the day. We're on, we're, uh, I have it, I have it, uh, I'm looking at the trends. I think we're going to get there, but I appreciate that so much. All right, hell yeah. Congrats, buddy. Good to chat with you. Have fun with the rest of your, uh, bachelorette, um, what do I say? I'm going to force you. They ruined up the end of it. <laughs> I'm going to force you to call back regularly, so I appreciate you so much, and, um, tell the hubby I said hi, and I'll talk to you later, okay? Will do. Talk soon, buddy. Bye. Oh, I love a Canadian. Don't you love Canadians? Oh, they're great. All right, let's go into a voicemail. Last time I gave a girl a rose after a date because we were both Bachelor fans. She told me she just wanted to be friends. Noah! (laughs) Oh, sorry, bud. That's so... Oh, sorry to hear that. That's hilarious, though. Yeah, I know what you mean, man. Girls are always like, I want my knight in shining armor. And then you show up in, uh, you know, uh, ironclad boots and they get freaked out. Um... Uh, so let's play a, uh, I had a voicemail from Florida. Let's play this 
voicemail from Florida. Uh, let me click on voicemails here. So this is a voicemail from Florida. Let's check it out. Hi, Dave. My name is Sammy. I'm calling from Florida, and I was just curious. Do you think that Dale and Claire spoke to each other before filming? Because their exchanges and their conversations did not seem like it was their first time chatting. And he even seemed like a little off and surprised in certain situations in which he was saying uh, that he was nervous before he kissed her, almost to, like, alleviate, so, like, almost to pretend that he had not known her before kind of thing. I don't know. It was just kind of weird. And she even made the point to say that Blake M or whatever was the only one to reach out with her. I don't know. I think something fake is something phony is going on here. What are your thoughts? I'm interested. Thanks so much for doing this. Have a good one. Bye. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for leaving a voicemail there, Sammy. Beautiful voice you have. Calling in from Florida. Appreciate you so much. Yeah, let me pop open. Um, Let's go back to this scene here. Uh, let's pop this over here. Here's why Claire said she knew it after meeting Dale on The Bachelorette. So, um, let me slide this over here. Yeah, what happened? Let's see if we can get the spark notes. Um, she said she knew it, and then people are wondering, you know, did they meet beforehand? Claire's insta-stalking game is unparalleled, it says. Well, look, before I read this, let me just, um, let me just, uh, say, uh, women, women be stalking. Right? Ladies love to do their research on a guy. As soon as you know something about a guy, you're looking for their Instagram. You know, they're, you're looking to see what Yelp reviews they left. on. Uh, you know, I, I got to get the close-up shot for this. Uh, ladies be snooping. I'm not saying men don't do this either, but imagine being in Claire's shoes. They're supposed to start this filming months ago, right? And then all of a sudden, she gets to know all the contestants, but, you know... Then they get, they get put on halt. She's sitting in her apartment with her two dogs, bored out of her mind. She's already watched season 10 of, um, you know, Trailer Park Boys on Netflix. She loved Caitlin Mimi's performance. She's, you know, callbacks. <clears throat> and uh, she's just, and she's like, you know what? Hmm, let me just Google some of the guys. And the next thing you know, she gets to Dale, who's um, <clears throat> former professional athlete, ripped body, good looking, became a model, influencer, gives talks, all these things. Uh, you can do some snooping on somebody before you met him. And then, so then when he shows up and she's like, I knew it, that's because she's already, you know, um, you know, been clicking her mouse over there. If you know what I mean? Uh, <clears throat> please do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? She's been uh, flicking the bean as it were. Uh, sorry about that folks. And, um, she, she, um, she, whether she met him or not, she had known enough about him because look, this is going to sound controversial, but it's not. Everyone is attracted to power. Hold on. Power comes in different ways, okay? Power can come in in um, attractiveness because that means you yeah that's like a that's a skill set for survival, charm. Power can come in position in society. Wealth is power. Um, uh, there's all these different types of power. Being a good live streamer, that's a good power. Am I good? We well, don't know yet. I even looked at the down votes, but um, it comes in different ways. Men. Uh, and again, so I'm going to, I'm going to stereotype here. People hate it when you do this. I, I had a joke I used to do where it's like all women hate being stereotyped. That's funny. Cause they said all women. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> a lot of men are, uh, see women as a status piece. So you get someone like uh, Colton Underwood, right? He doesn't need to marry someone who's got millions. He's going to be successful. He was the bachelor. He needed a trophy. He needed that blonde, good looking something or another, that could like be his sleeve candy. You know what I mean? And that happens with a lot of people. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen in the other direction, but a lot of women get to an age where the biological clock's ticking. This sounds so horrible, but we're talking about vast stereotypes here. You know, you can prove the difference. Tasha is more of a breadwinner than I am. It goes different directions, right? But funniness, if I'm funny, that can be a survival. That's a powerful thing because that can be a survival, you know, someone write in. So I don't feel like I'm losing all of you, but does this make sense? So you can have different skill sets, uh, to, uh, for longevity with a relationship. And she's able to see that he's got a lot going for him. She knows that whoever she chooses, if they're going to be a power couple, that they'll be able to do a podcast, uh, you know, events, this and that he's already like packaged up as this type of guy. You know what I mean? So whether she met him beforehand, I don't really know. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think they met beforehand? Um, please let me know. 
I don't know if I missed anyone's comments in the chat. Uh, Mar- 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 Margie? Margie says 1,000%. I get so, I get so um, nervous to talk about this because when I'm on stage doing comedy, I can like... I can tell if someone doesn't buy what I'm saying and I can see that I can have empathy towards them and I can sort of readjust when I'm making YouTube videos. It'll be like the next day and someone will leave a comment being like, you know what, man, F you like all women aren't that way. And it's like, I get it. When it comes to me and comedy, I speak in stereotypes because it's like women be shopping, you know, men be punching walls. <laughs> you know, Not all women shop, not all men punch walls. But, you know, more often than not, if you need to get, you know, your drywall repaired, it's because Chad Johnson uh, got a little moody one day. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> the hell am I talking about? So let's go back to this. Uh, uh, let's see where, how do I find this here? Um, chat box. The chat box is open. The webcam, the YouTube comments. Oh, I didn't even read these YouTube comments. We had so many comments that were asking similar questions about did, did Dale and Claire know each other? And the truth is, is that we just don't know. We don't know. Did they know each other or not? Um, I'm trying to find that, the box that I had open. Um, there, is this it? Let's do this. So let's see. Let's see if we can find any other info out. Uh, back in March, filming for The Bachelorette season 16 was delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Have you heard of it? Um, she waited for filming to begin. Claire was able to do her research in quarantine. They call it research. It's stalking. I get it. Uh, a first for the franchise, as she admitted in a new interview on October 13th. There was nothing against the rules of going on social media and looking at people, she told Entertainment Tonight. I feel like I'd be doing myself a disservice to not do my research and look these guys up. Hey, she got a point. You got to do your research. You know what I mean? The more you know, the more you know, the more you got to fucking, oh, <clears throat> didn't mean to swear there. Uh, Dale, in a lot of it, she said, Dale, in a lot of his stories, he would talk about his mom and he'd talk about his family, she said, noting that he definitely stood out. He, uh, he was with his family a lot and that is something that deeply resonates with me. But you ultimately don't know if it's a romantic connection because you're just seeing him through social media. Uh, though she didn't mention this research on the show, during the episode, Claire's I knew it in her remarking, I've been waiting for this before kissing him, definitely tipped viewers off that she was familiar with Dale before she, he stepped out of the limo. I don't know, Sammy. You're on to something. Oh, Sammy in Florida, she's on to something. And Bachelor alums, including Caitlin Bristow, Jason Tartik, and Blake Hortzman, we're all quick to pick up on the slip on their Instagram stories. She def stalked that Instagram, Blake's, Blake said. Ooh, she def stalked that. Yeah, she did. She stalked the Instagram. So um, she probably didn't meet beforehand. The question is, is did, did, did she reach out? I'm going to go ahead and take her word on it because until proven otherwise, I'm going to take her word on it that she, that none of the, well, she said none of the other guys reached out to her, right? Blake was the only one who reached out to her. So maybe that means that, she reached out to Dale. I don't think so. I think she was able to do her reconnaissance, do her research and figure things out. Um, do, 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 do. I don't want to talk more about Luke P. We talked enough about that. Um, any, does anyone have any comments on Luke P or JP or any of that nonsense? Um, there isn't too much else to say about that. Uh, I mean, what can you do? I wanted to make sure I covered all the things. So I wanted to talk about, uh, we talked about the JP and actually divorce. Um, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll read a few comments, and then we'll do the analytics report at the end. I'll read a few comments. Um, do, 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 do. How do I get back to the comment section? Hold on, folks. It's um, I made all these tabs, and then I don't know where they all are. i got to do a better job of labeling them next time. Um, can Let's see. Can you see that? No, that's not it. You can't see that. Hold on. Hold on. What you got? You guys have been great for hanging out here. I appreciate it. My first time... Uh, here we go. Bachelorette recap. I'll read some comments. Let's sort them by, let's go by newest first because a few new people left comments. I wanted to get to them. Oh, Tala said, oh man, thank you. I appreciate that. That's in reference to nobody ever saying, oh man, when they see me. Wouldn't that be nice if that was like, if that became sort of my, like my thing, people are like, oh, Dave's here. Oh man. I guess that's how you say it. Oh man. <laughs> oh, Dave's. Dave, your, your recap stunk. Oh, man. Um, Claire can handle the hard conversations. Really? Okay. Did I miss the deep conversations Claire had with Dale? Yeah. Didn't think so. Rachel, just sassiness. I don't even know what to say to that. Just sass. Um, 
Linda said, I definitely think she was DMing with Dale before the show. There's no question uh, as she says, I knew it, meaning she knew she'd have a connection in person after they connected via text. She just seemed too familiar with him. Other theories are that she looked him up but didn't interact with him. Apparently his public profile is pretty slick. Dave, what are your thoughts on this? I agree with you that her dog should have picked the first impression Rose recipient. Oh man. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Got another oh man. Um, Blue Rivers said you're so entertaining to watch. Lots of laughs. Thank you, Blue Rivers. Agua Azul. Um, Megan Dillon said, a good jawline helps you jump to conclusions. Hey, right? A good jaw. If a guy's got a good jawline, like if a cop has to write me a ticket, but he's got a good jawline, I'm like, yes, sir, officer. I'm just ready to listen. You know what I mean? There's something about that. That's part of that power I'm talking about. A good jawline is power. I, had, I met a cop once. He gave me a ticket and he shook my hand because when you're a white guy, they shake your hands. Sorry, folks. Uh, he had strong hands with giant forearms. And like, I was almost like glad to pay the ticket afterwards. I was like, it's just questioning a lot of my, uh, you know, questioning a lot of like what I'm attracted to. Okay. Moving on. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. uh, Milwaukee motors always company. Nice. It's funny. Recap. Appreciate you. Um, uh, Paris said, thank God you are not cussing. Is these the best re place to recap? Okay. Whatever rocks your boat, man. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Lauren Franco. The whole video was hilarious. Thank you so much. Leanne Brady. Oh man. I love your videos. I wasn't a YouTuber before I watched one of your videos and I'm hooked. I subscribed and don't miss any. Thanks for a great job. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Anna Maria as always too funny, lighting my day and bringing lots of joy. Cheers. Congrats on getting engaged. Thank you. I have nothing to show for it. I got no engagement ring. The lady does. It's a beauty. I'll, if she walks in, I'll show it to you guys. I was lucky to found a, I found a, an engagement ring. Um, on a a, 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 a a diamond ring dealer who had an Instagram account named Jewels by Grace. She has an Instagram account and my uh, girlfriend at the time was so excited by all the cool vintage diamond jewelry and diamond rings that she saw on this lady's account that, oh, speak of the devil, Tasha, she's coming in right now. Um, I'll share it with you guys. Tasha, I was just sharing about your diamond ring. Um, we got into it. You want You want to come in with me? Yeah, you do. <laughs> Hold on, everyone. You got to meet Tasha. This is an exciting moment. Hold on. Before you come in, let me let me close out these comments here. I was uh, just wrapping up, guys. I'm going to get into the analytics in a minute. I was just wrapping up, but now that I got Tasha in here, we might as well have our celebrity guest. I had Caitlin Mamie uh, checked in. Hold on. I don't have you yet. Hold on, folks. Here it is. We do the wide one. Oh, wrong way. There she is. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in. Hello. Um, someone had congratulated us for getting engaged because we haven't really done any of the bigger recaps since our engagement. We've had one season, but we got a lot of new people. So I was sharing about uh, my story and finding your diamond ring. Do you want to share it or is that weird? You can share what, the story. No, no, not the story. Just the oh, ring. Just give the, it a flash. Yeah, give it a flash. I don't know. Give it a flash. People like to see it. I was from Jewels by Grace and it was a um, vintage jewelry dealer and um the ring was mined in the eight or the diamond was mined in the 1800s so tasha loves antiques right yeah so that was that um i've been talking to people i had caitlin mimi called in uh we talked to her and uh, a couple voicemails from florida some people called in but um yeah so we've, awesome. it's been a relative success i don't know how many people are watching but we got a couple uh couple people in there a lot of florida and a lot of canada hey two nice places right you, see, you do not want to be here. All right, go. I'm going to finish up. Um, I've been I've been going for just an hour now, so I'm going to finish up with the analytics like I promised. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know where the chat went, so um, I lost the chat. Oh, there it is. It's Oh, geez, it's so small. I've been missing it. Uh, uh, oh, Oz said hi. Sorry, guys. I um, The chat, I just like accidentally clicked it out, so I lost a lot of those messages. Forgive me. I will respond to any live chat messages after... Um, Kathy said, it's a beautiful ring. Thank you. I proposed in Thailand and, um, I had a bloody finger. Uh, you go on my YouTube and you can watch the video. I, there's a whole, I, I told a whole story about how I accidentally cut my finger on a fern on one of those Thailand plants, uh, because I was trying to get a spider out of the way. It's a whole thing folks. Um, but anyway, let me get into the analytics of this video. So hold on one second. I promised I would share this at the end of the video. Um, at the end of the live streams, I'm going to share my analytics. Some people like to see them. Um, thanks to YouTube, I am now able to uh, uh, accept super chat donations from people. Um, we got a couple more people that, Tashi, people are a fan of you. Jen says, beautiful ring. She says, hello. Asma says, hello. Oh, Asma, you're in, you're in England, right? We got England in the house. 
Uh, she's so pretty in the ring. Looks amazing from Amanda. Wow, Tasha. Tasha's, uh, she's so happy, guys. She's smiling. She's going to murder me. Well, because I can't tell what your face looks like. Oh, she's, bring your sandwich over here. Gentlemen, I want to show you, I want to show you guys how you attract a woman this beautiful. I want to show you. you. You feed them. That's what you do. You give them food. That's it. No, hold it sideways so they can see the depth of it. <laughs> w women don't know how to make a good sandwich. That's not true. Women can't make a sandwich. Uh, Dave, here. Look at that. What you should, instead of saying women can't do something, what you need to say is you make an excellent sandwich and you take good care of me packing my lunch. So, thanks. Ladies out there, you need a tip. You need make your man a good sandwich. That's it. Go make him a good sandwich. I don't know. Good tip for dudes. Well, it's good for either one. If you're on the, if this one guy said um, they were friends with Bachelor, uh, they were Bachelor friends, uh, fans, and he went on a first date and gave the girl a rose, and she was like, I just want to be friends. <laughs> it doesn't always work. Um, uh, all the comments I missed said how gorgeous she is. Oh, uh, Margo, Margie said, Margie said that a bunch of comments said how gorgeous you are. Um, in 2020, we making lady sandwiches, said Noah. That's right, Noah. Make your lady a sandwich. If you don't know a good pastrami on rye recipe, you ain't living life. Um, okay, so let me get into the analytics. You guys have been on for a long time, and um, and then I can turn the air conditioning back on because I might be sweating myself to death. So let's see. Let's see how I can find the right web page. Hold on a second, folks. Um, is this going to show up? Do, do I have it? I might have it. No, you guys can't see it. Hold on. YouTube comments. I'm in the comments. Um, oh, that's not it. That's not it. All right, hold on. What you got? Oh, there we go. Did I find it? Here, let me just do this. I'll sign into YouTube right here, and then we'll go over the we'll go over uh, the analytics. A lot of people are afraid to share this stuff, but I I actually find that by sharing the strength and how well the channel is doing, that it actually helps. Um, oh, we have seventy one people watching, Tasha. Um, <clears throat> it helps kind of uh, show people how they can support. And um, you guys, the best way to support me is to watch. The videos, leave a comment, like it, and hit subscribe. That's the best way to support. If you want to go nuts and share it with any of your Bachelor friends, that's always good too. So um, <clears throat> we're going to look at the... Here's what I'm going to do. Instead of showing you per episode things... Oh, look, we're at 5,950 subscribers. So hopefully I'm not sharing any personal information here. So we're going to go to analytics right here. And well, this will be the last thing I do before I get out of here. So I'll make this kind of quick. So this is the revenue from the last 28 days. Now, I want you guys to know something. I was happy when I was making $16 a video, okay? And I still do. So, like, to yesterday when I released a video, it only made $29 in total, which wasn't much. But as you see um, in September, for no reason other than YouTube was paying more for advertising in September, they fluctuate their prices like a market. They, uh, they were paying this rate every single day. And um, as you see in the subscribers, in the last 28 days, I, I added 3,400 subscribers. I um, over doubled my amount of subscribers. If you look at the, like, let's say uh, the, last, uh, the last year, you can see the spike in subscribers that came just in the last month. So this is, uh, this is just the last month. This is how, and then if you see all these other little spikes that are happening here are, are days when, um, when the, when the bachelor, when my bachelor recaps came out. So it just goes to show how supportive you guys have been. Um, I'll show you the latest bachelor recap video, bachelorette recap video, uh, just so you can see, um, how much that pulled in. That is this video. And it didn't make much money because the, um, CPM rate, which is what YouTube pays was a lot lower for whatever reason, um, they demonetized a couple of my videos that were talking about Colton Underwood. And sometimes when that happens, you lose, <clears throat> you know, money. So they deemed my channel wasn't worth as much. I don't know. So this, uh, so you'll see this, this video itself didn't make much money. Um, I got 4,100 views, 612, uh, watch hours, 78 new subscribers and made nine bucks. And this doesn't include yesterday's revenue so it's probably double this it's probably about 18 bucks it just takes a few days for um for it all to load up uh but it but you'll see you know it's right in the middle of what the channel's been making and um yeah i want to thank you guys so much for all that have subscribed it's um it's not the biggest deal to subscribe but sometimes what happens is uh, i'll tell you guys sometimes what happens is 
for whatever reason, YouTube won't recommend my recap the morning after you watch The Bachelorette. So, uh, Catherine says, do you have a live stream schedule? I subbed yesterday after watching Claire's season premiere recap. Catherine, so thank you so much for subscribing. This is my maiden live stream. Uh, so I don't have a live stream schedule. Leave a comment and let me know if you have any recommendations. I kind of like the Friday afternoon live stream. I kind of like what's going on here. Um, I made uh, this beautiful artwork here just for this uh for this live stream, I didn't really know what I was doing. I still don't. I'm surprised this even works, to be honest with you. I was a little nervous. So as far as scheduling goes, uh, you did the right thing by subscribed. Hit the alert button, and it'll let you know when I have new premieres coming out. Um, I'll try to add those a few days in advance. I can add the thumbnail, and it'll say premiering at 11 a.m. Pacific time on Friday. And just stay in touch that way. I think it'll be Fridays. I've also thought about, do I live stream before the Tuesday episode? Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Friday Friday seems like a good uh, good way to match it all up. Um, someone said, your Colton video came up on my homepage today. That's how I found you. Oh, it came up today. Uh, I did great today. Oh, thank you so much. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've made a few mistakes. Like, I'm still figuring out where to put this chat box because um, I don't... <laughs> I just... There we go. I'm moving it right now. It's so hard to read. Like, I keep on moving it. So I need to do a better job. Uh, this live stream is fun. Thank you, isn't it? It's, it's kind of cool that I get to chat with all of you guys. Um, Asma, you didn't leave me a voicemail, though. What the hell? Um, do a poll thingy on your post. Yeah, okay, I'll do a poll thingy. Um, you're just like me, Sabrina, with not knowing the technology. Do a poll thingy. Um, so as I don't know if there's anything I missed. Leave a comment before I sign off right now and let me know if there's anything I missed that you wanted me to talk about. Um, let me know what you guys think of the recaps. Uh, I like the Friday afternoon schedule for live streams. Also enjoying your TH. I didn't see what it said after that. Boy, I, Jen, I really got to figure out these, uh, a better way to do these comments because I'm just not being able to see it all. I'm, I'm sure I missed so many good ones. I'm going to, I'm going to watch back and try to respond to a lot of your comments. Um, it's, uh, it's a work in progress, folks. It's actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to have a real rough go at it. Um, but, um, I appreciate all you guys checking in and, um, let's see, do I, how do I end this thing? Uh, no, that's not it. Uh, oh, oh, here, uh, also enjoy your artwork, graphics and thumbnails. They pop. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I just, you know what, Jen, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this for advice for anybody out there who wants to self-actualize. I didn't know how to open a Photoshop document one year ago. It was so complicating to me. Tasha helped me. Tasha knows Photoshop. As soon as you start learning how to do something, your brain literally, it's called the talent code. I got the book over here. Where's the talent code? Um, your, your brain will literally readjust um, how, it, how it processes things. I read this book called the talent code. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's good. I mean, the, you, don't, you could just Google the book, honestly, and you'll find the, the Sparknotes version of it. Uh, uh, Bestie, uh, Beat, sorry. Beat, Beat Heldenfeld. I like the Friday afternoon schedule too because it's 9 p.m. in Austria. Oh, we got someone in Austria. We got Vienna over there. Where are you called? We're in Austria. I've been to Salzburg. Uh, the hills are alive with the sound of music. <clears throat> Boy, I just butchered that uh, lyric. Um, anyway, the talent code, it's all about uh, readjusting your brain so you learn how to do something. And the myelin is an enzyme that gets you from A to Z, from thought to action, from fingertip to thought. So by just starting to learn Photoshop and learning Adobe Premiere and learning all the editing tools, um, it's a growth mindset and you're able to do a lot. So I have to say, I didn't know how to do any of this, but I knew in my head creatively what I wanted to do. So I've learned how to crop out my face and do it and do the one with, uh, you know, do... Way. The point of it all is um, don't wait on someone else to do things that you can learn how to do. And uh, I appreciate everyone who's kind of supported this live stream. Like I said uh, about growth mentality, I had no idea how to do this. I ordered the cable on Tuesday. It got in yesterday and we figured it out. Um, I appreciate that all so much. Um, oh, I'll, I'll shout out Tasha. If anyone wants to check out Tasha's new blog, you can see all of the professional photography she and I have done as we've traveled around the world. She's, um, we have a blog called wearetadatravels.com. Actually, here's what I'll do is I'll pull it up right here. Um, let's see which one. I, wearetadatravels.com. I'm going to end on this promotion, then I'll get out of here. And, um, Let's see. I'll click on this. I don't know if it's going to show up right 
Hold on one second, folks. I'm doing it in uh, browser source. So I do this. Well, I can't believe I can do this on the fly. This is really fascinating here. And um, our homepage is um, actually the week we, uh, we I proposed is the homepage. Hold on, that's not it. So we are Tada Travels. Tada is short for Tasha and Dave. And uh, here's the website right here. And um, that's us. That's this little uh, bungalow we stayed at in Thailand. Um, hey, look, Tasha, I'm sharing all of the, the things from the, from the blog. We want, we, we've wanted to incorporate our traveling, uh, Tasha, as a model, influencer, uh, and lover of uh, travel, and myself, lover of travel, comedian, uh, bringing our skill set uh, st- skill sets together to sort of share who we are and what we got going on. So anyway, um, I don't. It's not letting me scroll. Anyway, so that's the website. But um, <clears throat> appreciate you guys all for sticking around. And I think I'll call it at that. So thanks again so much. Let me end, let me end on a good video here. What's I need I need a good. All right, I'll, I'll end on that one. I'll end on a good little uh, <clears throat> audio clip there. Um, do, 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 do. Leave a comment afterwards if you're seeing this um, after it's been live, and I'll respond to you guys, and uh, I'll kind of work on all the glitches. And uh, I can tell you this, I'll, sh- I'll be here next Friday for the same deal. So if you have any uh, news stories about Bachelor, pop culture, anything in general, really, just as a jumping off point, let me know. I'll, I'll do a better job on responding to comments. Um, Alicia said, stay safe. Thank you so much, Alicia. We're staying safe out here. We got our masks on. We're all holed up. This has been, um, I'm a little late to the live stream party, but this has been a highlight to an unfortunate situation, uh, to be home working on new ways to broadcast the message out to others. Um, for all the people, Margie, Margie, thank you. Margie Madison. That's like a, that's like a nice porn name. Margie Madison. No. Anyway, sorry, Margie, just desecrated your name. But for all the people that found me through all of the recent content, you know, YouTube is promoting a lot of the content. Appreciate you guys so much. If you have any advice on how we can improve this puppy, uh, I didn't I didn't check if we got any more voicemails. Let me see if there's any more voicemails before I get out of here. Um, uh, da, 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 do, da, 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 boom. Um, okay, no, th- that's it. So anyway, appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Part of the dog. Bye, Bubba.